With that class, let's start muna. Okay, with how are we supposed to present a case study? Okay, for this subject lang ha. Okay. Now, Okay, so the first thing class that we have to discuss whenever we present a case study is, of course, a discussion about the disease itself. Now, something that you have to remember, class, is that, especially in, pharm in pharmacy practice class, one thing that you, we never really do is diagnose. Okay, hindi natin trabaho, class, ang pagda-diagnose because it's the physicians who are doing this. They are the ones who are trained to diagnose. We are trained, class, to assess our patients. Okay, don't get me wrong. Right? We are trained to assess our patient but not diagnose their disease. Kung mga class, ang, mga, ang trabaho natin bilang isang pharmacist will always depend on the diagnosis of our physicians. Kung mga class, we, we, we give recommendations okay, regarding what's the best course of treatment, okay, the best medications to be used, right, based on the diagnosis of our physician. Now remember class, all of us have different roles in the healthcare team. Doctors are ano? are the ones who diagnose. Nurses are the ones who give the care. Okay, We pharmacists decide on or recommend on what's the best course of treatment in terms of pharmacologic or non-pharmacologic ways of uh, management. Pwede bang mag-record? Yes, actually, nag-record na ako. Okay, again, it's um, the way I record this class is uh, a software for my PC. Okay, sorry nga lang, ang boses ko lang ang maririgyo doon, walang muka. Okay, and then slides lang. Then, uh, sa atin din maririnig yung boses ninyo pag nagsalita kayo. Okay, I don't know if you've uh, noticed that already. Sa mga other, sa toxicology natin, okay, nag-record ako doon, wala ka kayong boses doon. Uh, diba, I ask, I ask questions, then no one's ano. May sumasagot, pero hindi nakarecord yung boses nyo, sadly. Okay, kasi kaya lang i-record ngayon yung software ko is, yun nga, yung microphone ko lang. Okay, and then of course my screen. Anyway, so yun class. So, hence, it's important naman, class, that we understand how the disease progress. So, basically, it's pathophysiology. Okay, again, class, in this, in clinical practice class, again, we do not diagnose. But it's important, class, we understand how the doctors diagnose, how they diagnose the disease, para naiintindihan din natin yung pathophysio ng gamot, anong sakit, at the same time, how we are to treat the disease. Okay, now, class, why is it important that we understand or we identify the signs and symptoms of the disease? Kasi nga, class, again, one of our jobs is to assess. Okay, it's our job to assess whether or not, okay, a disease is progressing or our medications are working. Okay, so importante na alam natin yung sinyales o simptomas, class, ng mga sakit. Lalo na pag nag-start na yung treatment itself. Okay, kasi class, supposed to be, kapag nag-treat na tayo ng patient, okay, we are expecting na may mangyayari sa kanya, right? Na merong improvement right in the in the course of the patient's disease okay so hence class it's important that we understand or we know the signs and symptoms of the disease especially class lab results okay dito natin malalaman kasi kung gumagana ba ang gamot o hindi halimbawa class um sige yung example ko na lang ngayon in case example ko ngayon diabetes class how will i know if my medications, the medications we suggested, or the medications that that patient is using is, is, is working. Okay, ano yung titignan kong results dito? Anyone? Okay, ulit na, na, my diabetes ang patient. Patient is taking medications for diabetes. How will I know that the patient is improving? Blood glucose level po. Very good. Okay, isa sa titignan natin lagi dyan class will be blood glucose levels. Pwede yung daily monitoring. Okay, yung nag strip yung patient natin. So, checking niya, check niya yung kanyang blood glucose every day. Or class, of course, the most important will be the glycosylated hemoglobin. HbA1c. HbA1c. So, now class, this is probably the gold standard to determine whether or not the patient is managing his or her diabetes or not. Okay, kasi class, yung HbA1c, hindi mo madadaya to. Okay, this is the amount of hemoglobin, that, uh, this is the amount of glucose that has been stored in your hemoglobin. So it can assess class your glucose status, that's good for one month. Alright, kaya nga oftentimes class, ginagawa to every three months, every six months, depende sa doktor mo. Okay, so class, pag in natin yung effectivity ng isang gamot, or ng ating treatment, okay, HbA1c ang pwede nating tingnan. So tama yun, titignan natin yung blood glucose levels niya. Now class, do I expect immediate 
response from the patient once they start using medications. Especially kung outpatient yung patient natin. Can I expect them to have immediate response? Let's say, for example, nag-start ang treatment today, bukas normal na ang sugar levels niya. Hindi po, sir. Very good, Mr. Kian. Bakit sa tingin mo? Sa tingin mo lang, bakit sa tingin mo? Kasi yung, ano, sir, um, pharmacotherapy ng uh, diabetes na patient, is, it, take, it takes time po. Okay, very good. Okay, may mga further, ano pa po, uh, based na sa galing, may mga further checkups pa po, monitoring na dapat gawin habang nag-treatment yung patient. Alright, very good. So based on our guidelines, di ba? Nakasa- nakasaad din naman doon, gano'ng katagal actually ang itatagal bago magkaroon ng effect yung medications natin. Try lang nga class kung nabasa nyo, gano'ng katagal before we can determine if the treatment that we are using to the patient is working. Approximately? Anyone? Okay, okay lang kasi mahaba talaga yung guideline na yun. Don't get, ano, uh, it's 40... 40 pages long? If I'm saying, let me check that. Okay, it's 40 pages long. Right? So, um, true enough. Okay, mahirap basahin lahat yan. At sa class, one thing that you have to remember din, okay, kasi may mga nabasa ako sa mga comments ninyo or sa mga pinasa ninyong paper, is that parang magulo, ganyan-ganyan. Okay, well, you have to remember class, hindi rin naman kasi target sa pharmacists ang guidelines na to. Ang target nila would be physicians, clinicians, diabetologists, endocrinologists. So, they are speaking... Yung pagkaka-describe nila ng kanilang ano, ng kanilang information is with the assumption that they're talking to physicians. Okay, they're talking to doctors. All right? So they have their own separate language sometimes. So I can't blame you guys if we do not if some of the information we have there, they have there are things that we don't understand. Okay? Kaya nga ako personally class, whenever I see clinical guidelines designed for physicians, nitingnan ko automatically yung pharmacotherapy na because that's a ano, the words they use there are something that I have an understanding of, okay, being a pharmacist, right? Especially in diagnosis part, di ko na binabasa yun. Okay, kasi sabi ko, di ko naman trabaho to. Sila nang bahala dyan. At may mga terms na din na ginagamit na hindi ko talaga maintindihan. Like acronyms, say for example. Although I can understand it if I give time, okay, na talagang aaraling ko siya. Pero again, class, as a pharmacist, my concern will always be the treatment, pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic management of our patient. Right? So anyway, class, based on the guideline that we have, right, yung Philippine guidelines na pinakita ko sa inyo, sabi nila dun, class, approximately 3 to 6 months, pero within 1 month of treatment, you should see some results. Okay? You should see some improvement. Right? Pero, class, ang assessment will always be done after 3 to 6 months. Okay? Katulad ko, halimbawa, class, when I was diagnosed to have increased levels of lipids, di naman every month tinignan ako ng doktor ko. Okay? Sabi sa akin ng doktor, use this treatment, Come back to me after six months. Kasi nga, class, it takes time. Okay, hindi naman immediate yung effects ng gamot natin. Okay, you have to reach a certain, ano, diba, steady state levels pa. Then you have to wait until it starts working. Right? So, heads class, for us to know if the drug is working, we can look at lab results to assess it. Or class, we look at the symptoms or the signs the page, uh, of that disease. Okay? Next, possible consequences or complications of the disease. Why do we need to know this or why do we have to present this? Possible consequences. Okay, kasi class, we want to determine the severity of the disease. And of course, class, ang patient kasi, tandaan nyo ito, ang pasyente class, hanggat wala silang masamang nang nararamdaman, hindi yan magpapatingin. Hindi nila si seryosohin ang sakit nila. Correct? Okay, hanggat wala yung nararamdaman sakit ng batok, okay, or nahihilo, hindi magpapatingin sa doktor yan. Okay, well, one thing okay, you have to consider din naman is magbabayad kasi sila. Oras, di ba, napagpunta sa doktor, pipila ka pa sa linya, kung may linya yung doktor. So, hence class, we have to inform the patients of the severity of the possible consequences na pwedeng mangyari pag pinabayaan nila yung sakit nila. Okay? Halimbawa, cancer. Okay, pag pinabayaan niya, ano ba mga pwedeng mangyari? Right? And, and dami. Okay, diabetes halimbawa, pwedeng mabulag ang pasyente, pwedeng masira ang kidneys. Okay, it could lead to heart attacks, strokes, pag pinabayaan natin. Correct? So hence, class, it's important that we also present this whenever we're presenting a case study. Okay, para bilang isang pharmacist, alam ko yung sasabihin ko sa pasyente ko sa mga posibleng mangyari sa kanya pag pinabayaan niya yung kanyang sakit. Okay, and then of course, class, very important, we have to identify the treatment guidelines. Kasi class, alam nga naman tira tayo ng tira ng gamot. Sabi tayo na ito yung magandang gamot na wala tayong basehan. Okay, kaya nga class, ginawa ang mga treatment guidelines because... This guideline summarizes the body of evidence that we have right now. The current body of evidence. 
Pero I'm, uh, I appreciate class that most of you were able to notice this. Na kailangan ang treatment guidelines class should be updated on a yearly basis. Okay? Kasi class, again, every year may bago tayong findings regarding the use of medicines. Okay? There will always be new researches. Hence, class treatment guidelines, dapat meron silang... Um, tawag dito? Meron silang... Um, statement or aspect class sa kanilang guidelines that allows it to be updated on a regular basis. Okay? Kung baga sinasabi nila na kailang revision na sila. Okay? Kung baga kailan yung last revision versus the newer ones. Okay? Based on, again, the current findings. Okay? Current data that we have. So, yun. Appreciate ko na na-note nyo rin yung mga yun for some of you guys. Okay? As I was reading through your assessment. Right? So, treatment guidelines kasi again, dito lang naman kasi iikot ang rationale kung bakit we why we use certain medicines. Okay? So, yeah. so that should be part of the introduction. Okay, sabihin niyo kung ano yung treatment guide na ginamit niyo. Right? anong taon siya na publish? So on and so forth. Okay, the next one class of course since we were done with the introduction, then we'll proceed the class with the case presentation. So obviously class you have to present the case as it is written. Have you seen class on actual patient chart? Na-experience nyo bang makakita ng actual patient chart? Yes, yes. po, sir. Last right. time, nung mm. nag-collab po kami sa grand presentation sa nursing tsaka sa rad tech po. Okay, very good. So, class, you see kasi sa patient case, yung mga ibibigay ko sa inyong case class, similar to that yung mga sinusulat sa actual patient chart. Okay, kasi class, often times, sabi nga nila eh, uh, if you're making a patient chart, usually si, ano eh, si, si nurse ang gumagawa. Okay. Kasi minsan wala nang oras si doktor. Pero kung may oras si doktor, okay, siya yung gumagawa ng case, ng, ano to, ng, ng case, siya nagpa-present. Ninanarate niya class kung ano yung findings based on the, based on our patient. Okay, sa sinabi ng patient natin. Kaya class, importante nga raw, sa, ang sabi nga ng, ano, ng mga doktor namin before, uh, isa sa mga importante, uh, ang, ang importante dito class, madaldal yung gagawa ng patient case. Okay, sabi niya si patient ganito was admitted to ganyan, ganyan, ganyan because of ganyan, 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 ganyan. Okay, like three days prior to admission, patient was complaining of ano, stomach ache, which was which was relieved when using antacid, say, for example. Mga ganyan, ganyan. So, class, important na very detailed yung pagkakasabi mo dito. So, again, the way we make the patient case class will greatly depend on um, yung skills nung gumawa nito sa pag-interview. Alright? Dito makikita kung gano'ng ka-detailed yung kanyang, ano, uh, yung kanyang interview process kung saan na-probe na niya yung patient to divulge certain information. So again, it's a, no, it's a people skill. Right? Na kailangan ng isang pasyente, ng isang healthcare professional natin. Now class, again, sometimes kasi, iba mag-interview ang isang doktor, iba mag-interview ang isang nurse, iba rin class mag-interview ang isang pharmacist. Right now, okay, right now class, we have, okay, sadly, we don't have yet a, sa Pilipinas ha, hindi pa natin nagagawang mag-interview ng actual patient, tapos gagawa tayo ng case based on their, based on the interview that we made. Most of the time, class, we are very dependent on the interviews made by our doctors or by our nurses. Kasi doon tayo mag, doon iikot yung um, pharmacotherapy natin. Kasi based on their diagnosis, based on the diagnosis of the doctor, based on the assessment of our nurse. Okay, so how I wish, class, dumating ang panahon wherein we can have students interview actual patients okay, and then do Pharmacotherapy class, hindi naman kailangan Rx drug. Okay? Pwede OTC intervention ng mga pharmacists natin. Kasi class, again, majority of the diseased conditions naman class, makikita natin sa community, okay, hindi naman kailangan agad-agad ng Rx drug. We can manage it class using non-pharmacotherapy or pwede OTC preparations. Kaya nga class, I don't know if you've noticed, ito lang class ang isa, lang, isa din napansin ko sa curriculum ng pharmacy, ng BS Pharmacy. We don't have OTC. Okay, although we discuss OTC drugs, pero we don't have a specific subject for OTC. Well, anyway, I guess naka-reserve na yun for higher, ano, higher education for pharmacy. PharmD kasi class, they have a separate subject. Okay, OTC preparations or OTC management. Identify doon ano yung mga sakit na pwedeng i-manage using OTC. And then ano yung mga OTC na pwede natin gamitin. Kasi class, the pharmacy, professions, the, the pharmacy profession really shines in the community setting. Okay, we're in most conditions are manageable with OTC prep lang naman. Diba? Minor itch, burns, pain. 
Okay, tapos syempre stated lang doon kung ano yung mga symptoms na kailangan nating bantayan or in kailangan na siyang kailangan na i-refer yung patient sa isang physician or other healthcare professionals. Right? So anyway class, again we present the case as it is written. Okay, then make some comments along the way if you can. Kung may mga comment na kayo agad-agad based on sa findings dun sa case pa lang. Now, of course class, here we start now with our soap analysis. When we do soap analysis class, First things first, you have to state the subjective information. Subjective information class are statements. Okay, most of the time class, these are statements from the patient. Okay, ito yung mga sinabi ng pasyente. Like, kalimbawa, uh, ang, ang, ang sabi ng patient, uh, Sir, meron po kong epigastric, may, masakit po yung tiyan ko. Okay, so we state it as is. So masakit ang tiyan. Right? So, upon probing some part ng tiyan, halimbawa masakit. Okay? Now, those are information class that are subjective. Again, anything na nanggaling sa pasyente mismo, sila nagsabi, is considered to be a subjective information. Or nanggaling sa bantay, or sa kamag-anak ng pasyente. Halimbawa, hindi makapagsalita yung pasyente. So, again, the, uh, these are information about the patient's symptoms, which includes description of the symptoms. Right? Description of the symptoms like nature, onset, kailan lumabas, gano katagal. Napaka-importante ng mga information na to. Pero again class, kung hindi ito natanong during the interview process, right, mahirap, tong, ano, mahirap naman na makuha natin yung information na to kung hindi tayo mismo ang nag-interview, correct? Or hindi natanong ito na nang, nang nag-i-interview. So sometimes class, again, we are at the mercy of the information gathered by the nurse or, the, or our physician. Right? Pero, so, so, wala naman tayong choice doon, right? Anyway, so severity and associated symptoms. So, these are the things class that we often ask during the interview process and it will be classified under subjective information. So, I think alam nyo na rin naman to, right? So, description of any factors that seem to precipitate, exacerbate, or relieve the patient's symptoms. Okay? And then class, another thing that you have to state here during this ano, information gathering is how, how do you, how do you call this? Um, how valid are the statements of the patient? Kasi class, during the interview process, mapapansin mo rin eh kung pabago-bago yung sinasabi ng pasyente. Okay? So, reliable ba ang information na kukuha mo? So, that is something class that you have to state then during the interview process. Alright? Pero again, in our case here class, sa gagawin natin mga case presentation natin, yung information na gagamitin natin will already be provided for us. Okay, it's going to be provided for us now. Okay? So, description of any factors, yun nga, what precipitates the symptoms, kung meron man, right? Or um, exacerbates it. Like, halimbawa, after meal, sumasakit ba ang tiyan? Okay, and so on and so forth. Anong ginagawa ng pasyente to relieve the symptoms? Right? And description of the patient's effort to relieve the symptoms. So, those are all subjective information. So, one thing plus that, again, uh, you have to remember is that when we're talking about subjective in, subjective information, these are information stated by the patient themselves. Now, can subjective information be part of the objective information and vice versa? Pwede ba? Pwede ba yung, yung sinabi na patient ko na symptoms, pwede ko ba siyang ilagay as part of the objective information? Sa tingin nyo? Is it possible? Ilang class, opinion nyo lang naman. Wala namang problema. Anyone? Sa tingin nyo, pwede ba? Okay, kung nahiya magsalita, okay lang. Type nyo lang sa chat box. I think no, okay lang. Si, ikaw, Mr. Arwela, sa tingin mo? Hindi po. Hindi rin. Okay. So, most of you would say na no, right? Okay, ito. Ang mga sagot ngayon sa chat box would be no eh. So actually, class, <laughs> actually, some subjective information class like symptoms or ano, statements from the patient class can still be classified as part of the objective. Okay? Sa so, halimbawa, class, ha, halimbawa, these are yung symptoms na sasabihin niya are actually, are actually classical signs of a certain disease. Let's say, for example, uh, epigastric pain. Okay? That can, that can be subjective class because it's pain, right? Sinabi ng patient ko, Dok, sumasakit po yung ano, uh, ma'am sir, sumasakit po kasi yung ano ko, yung tiyan ko. Pero class, it could also be classified as an objective 
objective information because ang manifestation ng certain sakit would be obtained in that specific area. Okay? Nagets ba class? So, pwede pa rin naman siya. Right? Pero not all uh, subjective information can be classified as objective information. Some, definitely. There are some subjective information that can be classified as objective. Especially class if these are the signs and symptoms that are classic for certain disease. Okay? Like say for example class, back pain. Right? Back pain. Back pain class can be very general but it could also indicate possible um, possible um, signs of kidney problems. Right? And so on and so forth. Kaya kasi ba we do kidney tap? Sabi niyo kidney tap? Ilalagay mo yung middle finger mo or your index, your ano, pointing finger tapos tatap mong ganun sa, 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 ano, sa kidneys mo. If the patient is experiencing pain, then that could be a sign class na may inflammation sa kanyang kidney or may problem yung kidney niya. Alright? So, yun. So, pwede pa rin naman class. Walang problema doon. Okay? Sometimes class, what you write in the subjective information can be rewritten as part of the objective information. Now, kasi class, ano ba ang objective information? These are these are the actual data that we have okay, regarding the patient status. So oftentimes, class, in the objective information, and dito, na, dito natin mga, ano, dito natin nilalagay yung patient history, like patient's identity, age, gender, okay, height, weight, etc., etc., occupation, which could affect uh, yung symptoms ng patient natin, okay, yung kanyang sakit, based on the occupation. Halimbawa, construction worker, tapos ang complaint niya is masakit yung katawan. Okay, that could be ano, that could be attributed to the patient's occupation. Or, say for example, class, ang patient natin is manifesting genitalia pain. Okay, pain in the genitals. All right? Or 'yon. So, tan natin, ano ba occupation niya? Pwedeng ano siya um uh you know what I mean, right? Okay, nasa nasa ano um ano ba tawag sa anong mas magandang term doon? Okay, uh, nasa industry wherein they give services, certain services. Okay, so yun, based on the patient's occupation, halimbawa. Okay, dietary habits, sleep patterns, or sleep habits. Okay, these are the things class that we have to gather. Okay, of course class, part ng objective information natin would be yung current medica medical conditions. Ano yung mga diagnosed? Take note of this ha, these are diagnosed conditions. Conditions. Okay? May gamot ba siyang ginagamit? Ano yung mga OTC prep? Very important to class, lalo na yung mga herbal. Mga herbal drugs na ginagamit ng patient natin. You have to ask about this. Okay? Ma, may, may mga ginagamit ba kayong gamot? Wala ba mga herbal-herbal? Vitamins? Dietary supplements? These are all important class. Why? Because it can affect um, the, the, the condition of the patient. Or di kaya class, it could affect the treatment that we will be using for the patient. Let's say, for example, if the patient is using multivitamins, okay? Sige, pinakamadaling ano pinaka example, gumagamit siya ng calcium supplement. Now class, pwede ka bang magbigay ng tetracycline derivatives or ciprofloxacin? Okay, yung fluoroquinolones natin. Can you give that for a patient who is using calcium supplements? No po. Okay, definitely no, hindi. Okay, because class, one thing, it could kill it or reduce the efficacy of our medications. Okay? So, yun, especially pag concurrently administered in the GI tract. Now, kung nasa body na yan, nasa loob na ng sistema natin, okay lang yun, hindi naman kikilit yun eh. Pero ang kilation kasi class ng tetracycline or fluoroquinolones, okay, with calcium supplements, is nangyayari sa GI tract natin. Now, kung sakali naman class, nagtitake siya ng calcium supplements, do we ask the patient to stop if the patient will be using tetracycline? Or fluoroquinolones. Haha, <laughs> I forgot. Ah, uh, ciprofloxacin na lang. To be more precise. Now, class, do I ask my patient to stop the use of calcium supplements? No, po, sir. Very good, Miss Ano. Ah, uh, ayon, Miss Sarah. Ano sa tingin mong gagawin natin? Ano, sir? Interval na lang po mo na yung very gawin. Good. All right, very good. So, class. Pag meron kasing chelation na pwedeng mangyari between our drugs, okay, ang best thing na gagawin natin class would be put an interval. Usually 4, 5, or 6 hours apart. Okay, well, usually we recommend 4 hours apart. Okay na yun. Pero basta importante class, hindi mo siya sabay itik. Alright? So yun, tama yun. Very good. Okay, so next one, allergies. 
dito natin sinusulat sa objective yan. Okay, to avoid um, certain medications wherein the patients will be allergic to. History of ADRs to medications if the patient states some. Right, physical examination. Right, again, si, si, most of the time si doctor nagagawa nito. Okay, sa atin naman class, kailangan lang natin yung information na to, especially this one. Height, weight, age. Importante yan for dosing considerations. Sa part natin bilang isang pharmacist. Okay, syempre kailangan natin malaman kung ano yung mga gamot na tinitake niya, right? So again, this is something that we need. Allergies, kailangan din natin yan. And ADR history. Para malaman natin class kung ano ba ang gamot na pwedeng ibigay sa patient natin. And then another one class would be lab results. Okay? Now, the lab results class is important for us to assess whether or not the patient's treatment is working. Okay? And then make appropriate comments regarding this. The rest class, most of the time, other healthcare professionals na nangangailangan ng information na to. Okay? Like physical examinations, paano ginawa? Alimbawa. We don't really do physical exam, but we can. Okay? We can do basic assessment lang. Okay. Now, after getting us the relevant information, we start our assessment based on the information we have. Okay? Now, Based on the information we have class, we can definitely make a problem list. Some patients class may have multiple problems. Let's say for example, sasabihin niya, Sir, may lagnat ako, masakit ang ulo ko at masakit ang tiyan ko. Okay? Most often than not class, when you make a problem list, the priority will be the reason why the, why the patient is coming for your service. Halimbawa, bakit ka pumunta dito? Kasi po masakit ang tiyan ko. So that's number one on the problem list. Alright? Again class, Oftentimes, when we make a problem list, number one will be, ano ang reason bakit pumunta sa hospital or sa butika mo ang pasyente? That's number one. Yung other problem, yung problem list, ang mga succeeding problem list dyan class will be other conditions that the patient may have. Okay? Halimbawa, pumunta si patient sa butika mo para sa kanyang diabetes. Okay? Kung diabetes lang kasang problema niya, ang kanya ipinunta sa butika mo, may katanungan siya tungkol sa kanyang diabetes. Then that's number one on our problem list. Na, tanungin mo siya, ano pa po bang may uh, sakit ninyo? May sakit pa po ba kayo? Meron po kong high blood. So class, mauuna ba si high blood sa problem list ko o si diabetes? Okay, so tingin nyo, my patient has went to my pharmacy because of diabetes. Na upon asking, nalaman nyo na meron siyang high blood, so sabay pa natin, asthma. May asthma siya. Okay? So, class, ano sa tingin niyo yung mauuna sa problem list ko? Okay? Anyone? Sino unahin ko sa problem list ko? Okay? What's the patient's primary problem? Uunahin ko ba class si asthma? Pwede ko ba unahin si asthma sa problem list ko? Okay. Type nyo lang sagot yung class kung sakaling ano kayo. Ah, nahihiya. Or may... Ay, sorry, sorry. Okay. Class, sabi nga na, diba, ang problem list will be the list of, ano, uh, list of problems my patient have, have. Okay, ito yung mga problema ng pasyente ko. Now, class, normally, may rason ang isang pasyente kung bakit siya pupunta sa butika natin or bakit siya mapapa-ospital. Okay, scenario natin dito class is, meron akong pasyente pumunta sa butika ko kasi may reklamo siya tungkol sa kanyang diabetes. Okay, sa kanyang diabetes. Now, tinanong ko siya, okay, in-interview ko, nalaman kong meron siyang high blood at saka may asthma. Now, pag gagawa ako ng problem list ko, ano ang number one na problem na a-assess ko? Ano ang unang problema na dapat kong solusyonan? Yung kanyang diabetes, high blood, or asthma? Diabetes. Very good. Okay. Definitely class, although I know pwedeng life-threatening si asthma, pero kasi ano ba yung pinunta ng pasyente ko sa butika ko? Yung kanyang diabetes. So hence class, that will be my number one concern. Kung ano ang reason ng pasyente ko, bakit siya pumunta sa ospital? Bakit siya pumunta sa butika ko? Halimbawa class, pumunta ang pasyente mo sa 
sa ano sa hospital hindi makahinga tapos alam mo may brain cancer siya will your number one concern be the brain cancer no po definitely no class probably ang una kong problema diyan would be hindi makahinga pa patient ko so yun yung i-address ko so health class what again ang kailangan lang natin malaman dito is ano ba ang reason bakit pumunta ang pasyente sa ospital bakit siya pumunta sa butika mo and that will be your primary concern the rest class kaun ng bahala kung paano mo ipaprioritize yan that will be based on your clinical judgment Halimbawa, patient ko may diabetes, may hypertension, may asthma. So, sino sa dalawa ang unahin ko? Sino sa dalawa ang una kong i-manage? Well, kung ako titignan ko to, unahin ko muna i-manage yung asthma niya and then followed by hypertension. Say for example. Okay? Titignan ko kung may gamot ba siya for asthma kasi alam ko pwedeng life-threatening si asthma. Sa hypertension, hindi naman hindi naman agad-agad yung symptoms niyan. Though I know, um, pwede tayong magka-problem sooner ano, along the line okay, with hypertension pero hindi immediate yung concern. Si asthma pwedeng immediate pa kasi pag nagka-asthma attack, pwedeng mamatay ang patient ko. Alright? So that will be second on my priority list. Pero ang primary concern ko will still be my patient's diabetes kasi yun yung reason kung bakit siya pumunta sa butika ko. So maliwanag ba tayo dun, class? Again, whatever comes next, bahala na kayo dun based on your clinical judgment. Kayo kasi mag-rationalize niyan. Pero the primary concern will always be the patient's ano, reason for going or asking for your service. Alright? So, I hope that's clear. Okay? Okay. Then, class, based on the problem list that you get, assess for possible drug therapy problems. Now, again, class, wala akong concern sa diagnosis. Kung meron ba siyang undiagnosed disease. Okay? I, I want to clarify this one, class, ha? Gusto ko talaga i-highlight ito sa inyo. Dito kasi, class, nagkakaroon ng friction ang mga physician at saka pharmacist, minsan nagmamagaling-magaling tayo, dinadiagnose natin ng patient natin. Okay, halimbawa, mataas ang BP, sabi natin, ay, may hypertension ka, kailangan mo magpag, ano, magpagamot ng ano. Kailangan mo naggamot para sa high blood. Okay, ito kasi di ko makakalimutan to, eh, na, na-experience ko to before. May patient na, ang complaint lang is sore throat, ha? Is sore throat. Okay? So, pumunta sa butika. So, sabi ng, ano, ng pharmacist, ay, may sore throat ka. Okay, nako, kailangan mo na mag-erythromycin. Right? Ba't dinahignose na agad na may na, na bacterial yung cause? Okay, sabi mo, mag-erythromycin ka, sabihan mo yun ang deflam. Okay, tapos mag-gargle ka ng bactidol. Okay lang naman yung bactidol at saka deflam eh, pero yung erythromycin part, okay, I don't know. That's an RX drug. Okay, again, class, as pharmacists, we cannot prescribe medications. We can recommend to the physician to prescribe it. Pero at the end of the day, class, it's the physician who will be prescribing the medications. Okay. So, ayun, nag-diagnose na agad si ate. <laughs> right? So, again, class, this is a common area for ano, of friction between the physician and the pharmacist. So, we have to remember, class, it's not our job to diagnose. Okay? Our job, class, is to assess our patient. Right? Kung wala pa siyang diagnosis, then we can assess our patient and give recommendations as to OTC or non-pharmacologic therapy. Okay? Okay lang yun. Bigay tayo ng OTC or bigay tayo ng non-pharmacologic therapy, like gargle-gargle, water therapy, um, damihan yung fluid intake, yung mga ganong klase, class, we can recommend those. Pero, again, our main concern class will always be to look for possible drug therapy problems. Now, you guys know these drug therapy problems na, right? So, unnecessary drug therapy, baka may, may gamot siya na hindi niya naman pala kailangan talaga. Okay, baka mali ang gamot na ginagamit, ang dose ba masyadong mababa, may adverse drug reaction na nangyayari, Masyado bang mataas ang dose ng patient natin? Inappropriate compliance, ibig sabihin hindi nagagamit ng tama ang gamot? Or kailangan pa natin magdagdag ng therapy based on the patient's or the doctor's diagnosis or based on our assessment? Okay? Let's say for example, assessment natin, patient is in pain. Okay? Tapos wala siyang medication for pain. We can recommend OTC for that. Pero lagi natin sasabihin na go to your doctor para maresetahan ka ng mas maayos na gamot. We can recommend to the doctor na doc, mas maganda ng itong gamot para sa patient natin. Say for example, arcoxia. Okay, alam naman natin kasi ang arcoxia or etercoxib is an RX drug. We can't recommend that to the patient themselves. Pero we can recommend that to our physician. To the patient's physician. Alright? Siyempre, tingnan mo lang ang risk ng patient for those medications. When using those medications. So again, class, ang focus lang natin is drug therapy problems. Wala tayong pakialam sa diagnosis. Okay? Kahit minsan alam natin parang mali yung diagnosis. Pag ganun class, we have to talk to the doctor, not to the patient.
patient. Wag na ito pa klas, wag nating sisiraan ang doktor sa harap ng pasyente. Sasagutin ka ng doktor niyan class. Sino ka ba? Ha. Parang ganyan, di ba? Sabihin ko, bakit pharmacist ako? Okay, pero class again, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na mali ang diagnosis ng doktor sa pasyente. Na ano, sa patient mismo. Pwede natin kausapin kasi doktor in a nice way. Kaya nga class, meron tayong ah, uh, tawag dito. Farm Care 3. Okay? Ah, uh, yung Farm Care 3, tama nga ba? Farm Care 3 yung interpersonal communication skills natin. We need to know how to talk to our to other healthcare professionals. Okay? In a in a manner class that it's not com, comba, combative, 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 whatever. Right? Na hindi siya magiging defensive. Okay? So again, it's a skill class we develop through time. It's not something we learn lang in school. Right? Trust me, class, what you learn in school is just 10% of what you actually learn in real life. Right? Kung maganda, this one is just introducing you to real life. Okay? So anyway, so uh, yun, drug therapy problems. Formulate a comprehensive list of therapeutic alternatives. So based on the drug therapy problem you see, try to address it, class. Ano mga pwede nating gawing solutions? Okay? For the primary problem, including non-pharmacologic approach, ha? very important ito. Based on the treatment guidelines that you will be using. Okay, again class, hindi tayo pwedeng magsabi na ito ang magandang gamot para sa iyo. Simply because I feel na ito yung magandang gamot para sa inyo. Kailangan class, yung mga recommendations natin will be based on something that is scientific. And class, the best way we can do that is to use treatment guidelines or clinical practice guidelines. Okay. Clinical practice guidelines. And syempre class, ang daming clinical practice guidelines na available ngayon. Okay? It just so happened class, in my case, I always choose the Philippine one. Alright? So hence class, sobrang dami ng available clinical practice guidelines natin. How do I know which one would be applicable to me? Okay? As a healthcare professional. So kaya nga class, meron tayong AGRI. Yung ating assessment tool, which is the AGRI tool. Okay, so in your opinion, maganda ba ang clinical guidelines na to? So you try to evaluate it class in a systematic fashion, in a scientific manner. Right? So I guess most of you were able to present na sabi nyo nga, you will recommend it pero with slight modification. And most of you guys stated that hindi nakasulat sa clinical practice guidelines yung conflict of interest. Okay? And um, ano pa ba yun? Funding kung meron man. So tama rin naman yun, hindi nila na-state yun eh. Oftentimes kasi class, when you see clinical practice guidelines, umpisa pa lang sinasabi nila doon, this, ano, this guideline was not funded by any agency whatsoever, blah, 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 ganyan. Okay? Pero hindi ko rin nga nakita doon yun sa clinical practice guideline na yun. So I'm assuming may funding yun. Okay? From certain drug companies, halimbawa. Kasi class, some, some drug companies are funding doctors to make clinical practice guidelines. And of course, that, that inserts a bias. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng bias dyan. Kasi baka mamaya, yung drug kampad na to nagpo-produce ng certain medicine for the disease that they are trying to make a clinical practice guideline for. Okay? So tama yun. It could insert bias, biases, which could affect the credibility of a practice guideline. Right? Okay, anyway. What else? So note anything that requires attention or pharmacist intervention such as overdosing, carbon overdosing, wrong route, incompatibilities, ADRs, ito ka sa actual or potential ADR na pwedeng mangyari sa patient natin because of their treatment. Okay, so you have to state these things during the assessment part then. Now, after determining class the assessment, after nung ma-assess ang patient natin, then obviously class, you have to select an optimal therapeutic alternative. So based on the assessment that you've done, try to look for something that you would recommend to the patient and to the and or to the physician. So, optimal therapeutic alternative to address the patient's problem. Okay, sa ginawa mong problem list. Taking into account patient preferences. Kasi baka mamaya class, ang sabihin mo, sir, magamit tayo ng suppository. Eh, sabihin ng, ano, ng patient, ayoko nga. Ayoko ng suppository. Pagpipilitan ba natin yung suppository? O syempre hindi. Okay, because we have to consider patient's preference. Another thing, class, what if, sir, based on the guideline, yung pinakabahal na gamot ang kailangan ng patient ko, eh walang pera ang patient, pagpipilitan ko ba ito? So, obviously, class, hindi. Correct? 
kung hindi kayang ma-afford ng patient in class, that's going to lead to non-compliance. Kasi hindi niya mababayaran yung yung gamot na yun. So, hence class, you always have to take into consideration patient's preferences. Okay? So, kung hindi niya ka-afford ng gamot na to, then what's the next best thing? Okay? Okay. Kasi minsan class, may mga doktor na nagpre-prescribe ng gamot, napakamahal. Hindi nila alam na mahal pala. So, hindi magamit ng patient ko kasi nga, hindi niya afford. Okay? So, it's our job as a pharmacist to search for alternatives. Like halimbawa, clopidogrel ang nakareseta sa patient. Okay? Hindi niya kayang ma-afford. So, ang next best thing doon would be to use aspirin. Check mo lang class kung compatible ba para sa patient ang aspirin. Wala ba siyang allergy sa salicylates? Okay? Uh, wala ba siyang problem sa GI tract? Or kung wala, kung magkaroon man, dapat mag-i-report niya agad. Then of course, class, if we are to make alternatives, you have to inform the primary physician. Sa reseta, andun naman ang contact details ni doktor. Pwede, na si pwede natin siyang tawagan anytime. Okay? I'm happy to, ano class, I'm happy na nowadays, proactive na yung mga pharmacists natin. Minsan nga, PA pa ang tumatawag sa doktor. Okay? So they are proactive. Asking class kung, Dok, wala kaming ganito, pwede bang ganito na lang ang bigay natin? O di kaya, Dok, hindi, kayang, uh, hindi ma afford ni patient ang ganitong gamot. Can we give this alternative? Okay? Usually, sabi lang naman nila, generic po. Okay? Kasi minsan, uh, brand specific yung inaano eh. May reseta ni doktor. Okay? Pero again, you have to take into account patient's preferences. Notice class, whenever you buy medicines, the PA or the pharmacist will always ask you, branded or generic? Okay? That's a way, uh, that's ano, that's a statement class that would allow us, that would allow our patient to make a choice. Okay? Kukuha ba siya ng branded na medyo mahal pero mas hiyang siya? Or okay na sa kanya ang generic? Now class, again, ah, as pharmacists, we always believe na, na ang generic drug is just as effective as the branded ones. There, there are differences class in how they are manufactured. Okay? And totoo naman class, may hiyangan talaga when it comes to medication. Okay, there's truth to that. Kung sinabi niya mas hiyang siya sa gamot na yun, that's the patient's choice, right? At least we offered them an op we offered them options. We offered them choices. Okay? So kung mas gusto niya branded, then go ahead. Malay mo, may pera naman talaga yung patient na yun. Parang ngayon class, di ba, nung January, nung nagkaroon ng outbreak ng flu, well, kaubusan ng paracetamol. A lot of patients class do not want to buy generic paracetamol. May specific brand sila, Biogesic. Pag walang Biogesic, di bali na lang. Again, that's their choice. Okay? Anyway, what else? Explain the rationale for selecting the recommended therapeutic approach. Now, class, this is very important. Bakit ito yung pinili mong treatment? Sa sobrang dami ng options natin, bakit yan ang pinili mo? You have to rationalize why that is. All right. So when you rationalize class, another thing that's important here is you have supporting documents. Ano ang usual supporting documents natin dito? Journals. Okay, guidelines. These are very important. Okay? So yun class, pag sinasabi ka class ng ano, ng ter uh, ng treatment ano mo, ng therapeutic approach na gagamitin mo, kailangan mo siyang suportahan ng guidelines. Kaya nga, first thing na kailangan na dito is, anong guidelines mo nang gagamitin nyo? And then, make appropriate suggestions or corrections for anything that requires the pharmacy intervention, like dosing. May nakita kang problem halimbawa sa treatment ngayon ng patient, sobrang taas ng dose niya. Okay? So, yun. You have to um, make appropriate suggestions na lang din. Right? And then, lastly, class, last part na ipapakita nyo sa case study niyo would be patient education. Ano ang laman ng patient education? Okay, self-care, non-prescription medications, or uh, kung kailangan mong magbigay ng OTC prep, or non-drug therapy, ano, non therapy. So, convey accurate information to the patient, such as what to expect from the treatment. Ito class, ha? Expectations. Kaya nga, class, di ba napaka-importante na laging may expectation ng patient? Bakit? Halimbawa, class, kung ako ang isang hypertensive patient, bumili ako ng gamot. Ano expectations ko sa gamot na yon? Bumili ako ng gamot para sa high blood ko. Expectations ko, bababa ang BP ko. So, uminom ako ngayon. Bukas class, nakita ko mataas pa rin ang BP ko. Sa ano sasabihin ko bilang isang pasyente? Sabihin ko, ay, hindi effective yung gamot na to. Tigilan ko na nga to. 
di yata ko hiyang sa gamot na to. So, health class, kailangan iset natin yung expectations ng patient sa treatment ay bibigay natin. Okay? Kaya nga, class, laging natin kadalasan na siya at titignan natin is, gaano ba katagal? How long should I wait before I see any appreciable effects when it comes to my medications? So, kung for hypertension yun, at least a month, you'll see a decrease in the patient's blood pressure. Okay? Or pwedeng 1 to 3 months or 3 to 6 months, depende sa guidelines, tingnan na lang natin. Okay? Pero you need to stay, you need to set expectations. Or you need to set class na ano. You need to address the patient's expectations. Now, kung yan ay antibiotics, gano katagal bago siya mag-work? Okay? How, will, how long will you wait before you see any appreciable effects? Try nga natin class. Alam nyo ba kung gano katagal bago mag-work ang isang antibiotic? How long do you need to wait? Okay? Or how long? Yun. Sige, Miss uh, Dalan. Sir, try lang po. Usually po ang pagkakalam ko, pag antibiotic, seven days po yung treatment niya. Pero um, yung effect po niya is, I'm not sure is four or okay. more po. Alright, I'll take that. Actually, it should be within three days. Within three days class, dapat mawala ang fever. Okay, so thank you very much, Ms. Dalat. That's correct. Okay, most antibiotics class work within three to four days. Actually, three to five days ang sinasabi nila doon. Depende kung ano ang tinitreat natin sa kem. Pero most often than not class, after three days, dapat nawawala ang fever ng patient. Now, kung after three days class, hindi nawala ang fever ng patient, dalawang bagay lang naman yan eh. Either the antibiotic is not working or your dose is too low. Kaya nga class, diba, oftentimes when you're treating bacterial infection, you give the highest dose possible. Kasi nga, hindi binababy ang bacteria. Pero if we're managing cardiovascular diseases, we give the lowest dose possible first. Then, dahan-dahan natin tinataasan. Okay? So these are things that you have to consider. Now, ayan nga class, napaka-importante again na nagbabasa tayo ng guidelines. Okay? We know the guidelines na ginagamit ng mga doktor natin. Okay? When managing certain diseases. Right? So, dapat may expectations. Di ba? Kasi parang relasyon lang din. Okay? Kung ligaw-ligaw lang yun, tapos wala kang expectations, eh, wag ka mag-expect na exclusively mag-date lang yung niligawan mo sa'yo. Wala kayong sinet na expectations, eh. Wala kayong, wala kayong label, kumbaga. O, di ba? Kaya napaka-importante ng label class. Hindi lang sa pharmacy, kundi sa buhay-buhay din natin. Alright? So, ayun. So, you always have to set expectations. Kaya nga, ano, mahirap yung MU-MU lang. Okay, paano kung may ibang nanligaw? Sabi mo ako na una. Eh, wala naman kayo sinet na expectations. So, wala magagawa. Correct? Anyway. Uh, next one. Explain possible side effects of the treatment. Okay? And what you need to expect from the medication. So, kasi, uh, uh, expectation of the treatment like uh, how long? the treatment will be. Okay. Um, when to expect relief. These are things that you have to answer. Now, class, another thing that you have to answer in patient education is possible side effects of the medication. Okay. Like, halimbawa, halimbawa ako, sinummarize ko na lang to sa, ano ko, sa please press. But you can do this, you can state this in more details. Halimbawa, yung sa recommendation sa medication. Actually, okay. Pwedeng, halimbawa, hypoglycemia. Okay? Pwede mag-expect ang patient ng hypoglycemia. Or kung gumagamit ang amlodipine halimbawa, pwede i-expect ng patient na magkaroon ng edema or pamamanas. At ito ay normal na nangyayari kapag ikaw ay gumagamit ng amlodipine halimbawa. Okay? Stuff like that, class. So you have to state the possible side effects and what to expect from the medication. Kasi class, again, if a patient is using a drug, nakarana siya ng side effects, ano ang gagawin niya? Titigilan niya yung gamot, correct? Pero class, kung itong side effects na to is within expectations, okay, then class, at least alam ng pasyente na ay normal ito sa gamot na ginamit ko. Halimbawa na lang class, bakuna. Di ba every time na magpapabakuna tayo, ano sinasabi sa atin? Pwede po kayong makaranas ng lagnat, uh, si, ano, ng konting pag, ano, pananakit ng katawan. Ano lagi sinasabi ng mga, nags, ano, ng mga nurse natin or yung mga nag-administer ng vaccine? Normal lang po ito sa bakuna. Okay, para class, ma-inform na yung patient na these are things that you need, that you will be expecting from the bakuna. Okay, para hindi ma-alert yung patient. Maliwanan? Are we clear? 
Okay, di ba siya sabi nila, kung nakaranas mo po kayo ng pananakit ng katawan or lagnat, pwede po kayong gumamit ng paracetamol. 500 mg, Q4 or Q6, depende na sa inyo. So, are we clear? Kaya class, very important yung expectations na ito. Okay? We can't just recommend, tell them na ito yung pinakamagandang treatment, then leave it as is. Right? It's important that we state also the expectations Uh, what are the possible effects and side effects of the medications to our patients so that they will be informed or they will know what to do if ever they experience these things.